I have some advice for the world. That it's where I seen something in what looks like. What was your most embarrassing moment? Probably this interview. Man, I, I promise you, I won't be back on this crack. This is where one man is forced to devour multiple insects at in one sitting to be prepared. We're gonna get this rolling. Even though, well, I don't even have an introduction. We're just gonna get started with names and share who we are. This is the first, the first many. And then there's people out there watching. I gotta be like, hey, what's good? Thanks for tuning in. This is Mega Mo. This is, let me introduce you first. I think he's on this side. Am I on that side for you? You know what? They're seeing my side, so you're on that side. This is the Merciless. The Merciless show right here. That's his channel. There's a lot of great stuff, a lot of content, a lot of different content, which I like to see. He's always a. Uh, putting his hand in different area got me in reacting vi reaction videos i was like what what's up and it's mega mo here back at you with something different something new something hopefully that <sighs> gets me learning yeah man i tell you what hmm. i really like your videos man oh yeah yeah man because you really speak more huh right, go ahead go ahead yeah, man, because you really speak on a lot of positive shit. Oh, yes, most definitely. And uh, I told some friends. Mm -hmm. I told my friends to uh, subscribe to your shit. A word? Man, I can't, to be honest, man, right now, mm -hmm. I can't even think straight, man. But I'll tell you what, mm -hmm. I'm, still, I'm still waiting on uh, a response mm -hmm. from, from Will Smith. From yeah. Will Smith? <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 See, hmm. this is the thing that he said. Now, he got on Twitter or some shit mm -hmm. and said, uh, he said some shit like, uh, there's no place in this world for violence. And I reacted emotionally. Mm -hmm. He said, in this business, you gotta be able to take abuse. So this, this is where I'm standing on that. Mm. In comedy, mm -hmm. people are going to throw all kinds of shit at you. You seen that show called uh, Yo Mama on MTV? Back in the day, there was a show. There was mm. this show where uh, they would literally bring out opponents' mamas and throw your mama's jokes right at them. And they would be saying some foul shit. Oh, word. They would be saying, they would be saying some foul shit. So, oh, damn. And, and you, there, there's other shows like uh, the roast of, uh, I'm sure there was one called uh, the roast of Cat Williams, the roast of Donald Trump. You know, there's these roast shows where you invite people just to come and say the rudest shit to you. And this is what I'm saying. It, Will Smith made his uh, start in comedy. He wasn't he wasn't a movie star. He wasn't he wasn't a Hollywood kid until he got his start in comedy. Mm -hmm. And with him being a comedian, he should know that, you know, in comedy, there are no, there are no boundaries, you know, people no boundaries. will talk about anything. There are no boundaries in, in comedy. People will throw everything at you. And he knew this. He knew this. He admitted to it. He mm -hmm. said, I know to do what we do. 
You got to be able to take abuse. You got to be able to have people talk crazy about you. In this business, you got to be able to have people disrespecting you. And you got to smile and you got to pretend like that's okay. That's true. Um, but yeah. in, his, in his profession, mm -hmm. that's just another day at work. That's what he does for a living. Mm -hmm. that's, that's basically saying, you know, if you can't handle a hard day at work, quit your job. Because that's the kind of shit that he signed up for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he, he says some shit like uh, violence has no place in this world. You know what kind of people say that, man? Mm -hmm. Who? There's two, kind, there's two kinds of people that say that. Mm -hmm. There's uh, pacifists. And there's people that say that just to sound like, you know, I'm a lover, not a fighter. After getting done slapping somebody just so they can not have any repercussions. They want to seem, they don't want to seem like uh, the violent type because so he, they know that somebody will come after that ass. Like a apology, like a real apology there. It's like, that's the way he would half-ass his apology in a sort of way. Yeah. I mean, cause see, this is the thing. Mm -hmm. I've seen, this ain't the first time Will Smith has done this, man. Um, there's a uh, Chris Rock and you know what, man? I give Chris Rock the most respect in the world, man. Mm -hmm. Because at the Oscars, man, let me tell you, man, all of America's watching that shit. Oh, yeah. All of America, all of America's watching that shit. I wasn't because I don't have cable, <laughs> but uh, all of America was watching that shit. And uh, man, that shit's gonna be around forever, man. Like uh, people are always gonna be able to go back, look at the Oscars of uh, 2022. And that's going to be that main punchline every time they see it, man. That slap. That slap is. That, that slap was so disrespectful, man. But I applaud Chris Rock, man, because he was within his full legal rights to defend himself. Will Smith threw the first shot. Oh, Richard. <laughs> That's facts right there. I actually heard on TV the police, they came, the LOPD came there to actually talk to Chris Rock and about the assault. And he said, no, I'm just going to let, I'm just going to drop it, let it be. Exactly. And just move. Exactly. He said, I'm just going to move yeah. on. Yeah, bro. He said he was going to move on from it, but it's because I'm guessing they talked in the back. I, have, I just remember seeing this on break whenever I was uh, at lunch. Man, man. Uh -huh. they, and the producers, man, they were shocked. They said they didn't even, they, they didn't know what it was. Like, he just came out there and just did it because this wasn't a scripted. It wasn't none of that. Man, though. That was funny, though, because to see, like, if you saw right before he slapped, I mean, he said, you saw right after he said that joke, Will Smith laughed, but then he saw his wife not laughing. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah, and let me tell you something, man. man. And that's, mm -hmm. that's exactly what I was going to say. Thank you for bringing that up. Man. Will Smith, Will Smith is the mm -hmm. biggest, mm -hmm. the biggest simp imaginable, boy. Dude. You know what a simp is? Yeah, dude, I was just thinking that because, yeah. man, how his, how his wife did him with, uh, his wife did him with, uh, slept with him. Mm-hmm. 
Dude. That's what I was going to say, man. He slept with his best man. That was so mm. hilarious. And the way he looked on one of the shows was like he was dead inside. He was dead. August Alcina was his best man? Somebody. I'm pretty sure. But like his, Is he his best. Finger? He was his best uh, best friend slept with his wife. Oh, and, well, damn, that wasn't the first time then, man. Cause, uh, no, it August, wasn't. Man, this is what I'm saying. How can you defend a bitch that's cheated on you more than once? Keep my man. wife's name out your fucking mouth! That's what I'm saying, man. Will Smith is the biggest simp alive, man. When he met Jada, he put his balls in his back pocket, man. Ooh. That ball is supposed to be in your hands, gripped right, and then put it in your sack when you're ready to play with them. <laughs> Dude, that was that was crazy. I actually saw that. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, man, I posted a, a Facebook post, mm -hmm. and I showed you. I'm saying. I'm like, Will, uh, I said, Chris Rock took that shit and laughed at it. Let me tell you something. If a man's got issues with another man and you don't want to talk it out, you're not going to go up and smack them. That's what somebody's mama does. You're right about that. You're right about that. Because they know nobody's yeah. going to touch their mama. Exactly, man. Now, see, that's that's what I'm saying, man. Mm. Will Smith showed the most disrespect to Rock, man, because he didn't have the balls to punch him, man. I mean, he 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 that that's like backhanding a bitch, man. Like he he treated him like like a like a old man, mm. but. I'm not gonna say anything bad about Chris Rock, man, because I, I give him props, man. He he maintained his cool about that shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that I will say, Chris Rock, mm -hmm. he laughed that shit off. You know what he said after after Will Smith Smith sat back down. He laughed his ass off and said, Oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw that oh, out there. Man. Dang. Oh, man. But, uh, you know, there wasn't one tear in, in Chris Rock's eyes, man. Like you can usually tell when somebody's fighting back tears because you'll see them with tears in their eyes. Mm -hmm. But that man, I believe that man seriously thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. Dude, he was just shocked that it even happened and that he got slapped and not punched. I mean, I, I bet, I bet he was just like, "What the? What just happened?" Dude, that shock in his face was just. You can see he. he Man, he was just trying to hold his composure, man. Like, what the, what the flip just happened? Yeah, Damn. yeah I mean, see, this is something that that I wish, man. Mm -hmm. I wish, I wish Chris Rock, I wish Chris Rock wasn't even hosting the Oscars, man. Mm -hmm. I wish it was Conor McGregor, man, because he would have said all kinds of foul shit and would have dared Will Smith to get up and do something. It would have been a different story. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, imagine that. And then Conor McGregor just fighting back when he, like, started. Well, I, I, I'm i pretty sure Conor McGregor's jokes would be a little bit a little bit more at them. And just yeah. uh, a punch of a – it won't even be a joke. It would just be, like, a punch with words. It's going to be – it would be something else. I'll tell you what, man. Mm-hmm. Conor McGregor, 
man they're not the shit that he says isn't even jokes it's like the foul it is the foulest shit that someone can say about you man down there like pissing on somebody's grave man he just don't give a shit but i mean yeah, I, I, in that post, I was telling, um, I was basically saying, you know, because he played Muhammad Ali in that movie, Ali. Hmm. And uh, I said, man, you got some standards to uphold if you're going to play Ali in movies. You got to sting like a bee, not like a butterfly. And I said, I said, hit on somebody who's going to fight back. I'll leave that post up for probably about a month. Mm-hmm. And after that, I'll probably take it down. Because uh, somebody, you know, take that shit the wrong way and have, have police on me or some shit. You said Polly? Huh? You said who? I said, I mean, cause cause Will Smith's famous, man. He's probably got a team of lawyers in his pocket, man. He can probably find any kind of way to to take somebody to court. And um that's why I left my I left I left it really simple. I just said, hit on somebody who's gonna fight back. I didn't say nothing like I'm going to beat your ass, but hoping he messages me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a bitch at the Oscars. Mm-hmm. I want to set something up with him, give him a little bit of respect. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Try to get something set up, you know, like a um, like a one on one back uh, backyard yeah, yeah. backyard boxing or something. Or would you even go gloves? You do gloves or no? Nah, gloves? there wouldn't be no gloves, man. Nah. There wouldn't be no backyard shit, man. I can't I, I can't do shit with everybody watching. Nah. But but um, I mean, I would make there. I would make it have some kind of contract. Mm. To where, uh, the, to where nothing can come back on me, um, and it, um, nothing can come back on me uh, that might get me in trouble. Mm. Like sign mm. a form where y'all both be like, uh, we sign to fight each other to, shit, make it interesting to the death, but none of us are going to legally fight each other and that bam well, there's probably more to that but you get a he, he could get his lawyers write it up or you get yours but i would offer first i always offer write your contract first so you could put that little small detail yeah. all the details in there for you yeah get that in there yeah. but let me tell you something hmm. that wouldn't be that wouldn't be all of it man he'd have to pay me $50,000. Hmm. I mean, it's not. Well, I mean, look look at the UFC. Look at look at boxing, you know, like uh, Floyd Mayweather. Mm-hmm. Look at uh, Conor McGregor, man. You don't just fight with the best of them. You got to pay for that ass whooping. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Shit. That's I mean, when they commercialize it. Yeah. Would, you, com- would yeah. you commercialize your fight? Oh yeah. Oh shit. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. Let's see. That'd be interesting. Very interesting. Man, I mean, see, I won't lie. Other than him being cheated on. And he cries over his wife so many times. Other than that, mm-hmm. I don't know shit else about him. As far as I know, mm-hmm. 
trying to be a heavyweight boxer. <laughs> Might just be, huh? And then if but, he uh, wins, if he wins, what does he get? A free ass whooping or a well, free punching bag? No, I tell you what. Hmm. If he wins, no, no. I mean, it's not. It's not one of them things where, you know, I put up this and he puts up this. Hmm. It's a purchase. He's paying me. He's purchasing this luxury ass whooping. Wow. <laughs> I hope you don't make it as luxury, you know, as uh, don't don't let him go scot free. Put some sting to him, you know. Show him who's who's um, really meant to play that Muhammad Ali part. <laughs> well, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. He'll take two things away from it. Mm -hmm. He'll take, uh, well, you know, I got a chipped tooth, man. Oh, shit. I, I, I've lost plenty of fights, man. Mm -hmm. But I ain't never been a bitch. Mm -hmm. There goes the difference. That, that, that makes it di a huge difference between a fighter and one who just talks because talk is cheap right um but i mean i'm not i'm not saying that you know i i i, I went up against him that's why i'm saying he's got to pay me up front for this ass whooping because one thing is guaranteed mm -hmm. somebody's getting their ass whooped it might be me it might be him you know <laughs> <laughs> so so um you know mm. you know but he he's just about everyone in his family are multi-millionaires his daughter uh willow smith i believe she's a million uh millionaire mm. uh jada man she's worth all kinds of money man will smith their son, their whole family wow. is millions. So when you're a millionaire, you can afford anything, man. That's why I'm saying I'm not like man, like the shit that he did at the Oscars, that's a bitch move. Mm -hmm. Because real men, they don't bitch slap another man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but I call him a bitch, and I'll stand on that word. I'll stand on everything I'm saying right now. Mm -hmm. But as far as I know, he might beat my ass in a minute. Mm -hmm. Because when you're a millionaire, you can afford top dollar uh, MMA training. You know. You can afford to box with the best. You can afford to learn from the best. Hmm. But, well, you know, with me growing up in the projects, mm -hmm. you know, I, I grew up fighting, you know, multiple cousins against myself, you know. And, you know, I, I got my ass whooped plenty of times. Mm -hmm new to an ass whooping and uh i wanted to join the military but because i'm on medication they won't take me so that's when i started joining uh my martial arts to channel that uh that combat mentality in a positive way you know mm -hmm. so, i mean Street fights. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure most men have at least been in one fight in their life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's two things that I got with me. Experience the street fights, uh, willing to take an ass whooping, and uh, willing to fight while I'm getting my ass whooped. Some people just take a broken nose and call it quits. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I'm fine until I can't move, you know. Mm-hmm. But, and see what and see what he said. He said most men have been in at least one fight, and if you haven't been given that chance, get better. Get better at that chance if that chance ever happens, because one day it might happen. And shit, it best be best be prepared for when it happens, because that's your one chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, that's common because me and you we come from the same neighborhood. Mm-hmm. In projects, it's not it's not uncommon to have to, you know, fight with somebody. No. But, but, even, mm-hmm. Go ahead. but but even living long as real lives mm-hmm. got got um experience of fights because you know there's nothing worse than you know going to school and being rich and being called uh uh, uh, silver spoon, rich boy. You know, there, there's conflicts in all parts of life, man. Not just in the lower parts, like the projects or trailer parks. There's conflicts in in the uh, damn not all damn, the levels. Um, exactly, mm-hmm. in the mansions, everywhere. But. Um, um yeah man i don't think i'm gonna hear anything back from him but uh you know because you know i'm 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 not famous i'm just some some nobody you know so he's probably not gonna pay my post any attention unless unless you know how to target him unless you know how to go on, on facebook target Target specifically uh, Will Smith's family, and then only his family is gonna see your post and be like, "Yo, this dude out of nowhere wants to fight you." And he he said you pay him fifty thousand. He said, "Huh? Yeah, there's yeah. a chance right there." <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. Fifty thousand uh-huh. dollars a millionaire ain't shit. Oh. Mm-hmm. And depending what type of personality they have, if they spend like like that. It's nothing. It's just another day in paradise. Man. I mean, even if he was poor, he'd be able to borrow the money from his kids, man. They're they're millionaires too. <laughs> Borrowing some money from man, your kids. There, there ain't no excuse, man. There ain't no excuse, man. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I tell you what, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, never mind. What? <laughs> I was going to say, uh, mm-hmm. I was going to say, uh, I'd probably be willing to, to put up everything I own. Mm-hmm. To match him with his fifty thousand dollars, but man, all of my shit combined probably ain't worth ten thousand. Ah, uh, dude, dude, that was funny. That was funny when I saw that. I was like, "You gonna put up everything?" Hey, yeah. that, that's a that's a good deal, though. That's a good deal. I would say because if you lose everything, then you if, if you I lose lost, everything. Hmm. Man, man, yeah, I lose everything, man. I, 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 shit, I'll give him every damn thread of my clothes, man. <laughs> but man, you know, I, I'm I'm scared to take that kind of loss, man, because I'll be homeless again. Oh, fuck man, it. you you get restart man. like a like a sim character, all butt naked without nothing. You just gotta work your way across life. <laughs> shit. Oh man! The only way, because if you hit rock bottom, the only way you could go is up. That's it. Man, like- man, I tell you. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, man. A lot of people hit rock bottom and they stay there, man. 
man, because, uh, man, I know this man who's been homeless living in a, a bathroom at a, at a car lot, man. And uh, he's been living there for 10 years, man. Found himself mm -hmm. a comfortable place. That's a little scary, especially if you are uh, like uh, poor minded, I would say. Like his, his mind and, and, uh, and that uh, growing mentality, a growing mindset. Mm -hmm. Dang. I ain't never seen no homeless man like that. I, mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you what, though, man. Hmm. That's if, if I was homeless, mm -hmm. that would be the kind of homeless man that I would want to be, man. Like because, man, there's there's worse places you can live than in a bathroom, man. There's there's people out on the street, man. You know, fighting over trash cans and shit, man. That's facts, man. That's facts. Instead of building a community, they they tear their shit up. Each other's man, they just tear it up. They take they take the the sticks of their camp, and then just leave them with one like the other two, just so they don't notice that one is gone. But they running, they running with their carts. Have you ever seen a uh, have you played that game Party Racers, man? Take take the damn party, uh, racer. party racers, yeah. It's like you you grab a porta potty and just go go off and then just launch yourself, man. That's damn, bro. They're gonna take a oh, porta potty. Dude, it's a dude. It's a. It was a fun game back in school, back in uh, middle school, playing them cool math games. You know, shit. That was the that was the stuff. I don't know oh, if you have ever. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I thought yeah, you man. meant like. I thought you meant like the actual. Uh, you know, going out there pushing the porta potties down the damn hills and shit. Oh, man, I seen some of them in ditches, man. I seen some of them in ditches. And I don't doubt somebody cleaned it out and then lived there. That's a good shelter right there. Damn. Man. But, uh, man, uh, dude, man, you know that shit, uh, hmm. Fucking uh, Putin, man. And see, Putin is one guy, individual. Mm -hmm. He like he don't he doesn't need an army to be a badass because this man was a KGB agent. Mm. Man, he he can handle his shit by himself, and he's in his seventies. Mm, I did not know he was in Just his seventies. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is the thing, man. Mm -hmm. There's two things. Well, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. I was watching the news. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was hearing something that uh, Putin's own Russian soldiers are giving Ukraine uh, uh, giving Ukraine soldiers heads up so they could, you know, know what to expect. They're they're actually helping the Ukraine soldiers to be prepared. Yeah, I can't confirm every uh, item in in that uh, that uh, that British reporting there about the uh, about shooting down aircraft and and everything that they put in there. That said, uh, Ali, what we have seen uh, is poor unit cohesion, poor morale, poor leadership. We've got uh, plenty of anecdotal evidence uh, that at times and at places uh, Russian soldiers have simply given up. They've simply walked away from the fight uh, that uh, that they have in, in some cases uh, uh, actually sabotage their own vehicles so that they would run out of fuel and, and not be able to replace that fuel. Um, and uh, there, there's been three attempts on the Ukrainian president. There's been three attempts. Mm -hmm. He's been able to get by every time because the Russians are helping him. The Russians, the uh, Russian, uh, I'm not sure if they're, they're the soldiers or, you know, someone. Our people, our Ukrainians, do not retreat, do not give up, do not stop the resistance. They shout to the occupiers, go home.
Я залишаюсь тут, залишаюсь у Києві, на Банковій, не ховаючись. Up in the politics, but it's one of the Russians who is given, um, I believe the Ukrainians president is, I believe his name is Vladimir or something, or something like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, man, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. the, you, the Russian president, he can't trust his soldiers. Most of the soldiers have no morale. If you don't have any morale, you don't have the spirit to fight. And that morale is so low for the people who are even Putin loyalists because many of them You know, many of them thought they were just, you know, they, they joined the military, thought they were just going to go through training, and they haven't even got their training done yet. Uh, we, we know that they have had morale and unit cohesion problems born, we think, uh, largely out of the fact that it's a conscript force. They're draftees. These are young, young men who, in many cases, had no idea that they were going to be invading another country. They thought they were going on a training exercise, and they clearly weren't fully prepared and ready uh, for actual combat. They just threw them in there and said, hey, you're going uh I'll give you these guns and go out there and kill some ukrainians they haven't even had their training done man. so they're low they're they're low on ammunition they are not properly trained so some of the newer recruits are not uh, uh properly trained and um man it, it's just It's so terrible for, for Putin, man, because everywhere he looks, it's going to be some more bad shit. Like, I bet he dreads picking up the phone and saying, what is it now, you know? Because the damn Russian soldiers are... are are being are traitors to to putin and uh man the ones that are loyal just ain't ready to fight no nope. they're not they're not properly trained they, they didn't go through the whole thing sheesh damn bro imagine being dang that top general and when he picks up that phone he's like yeah we found four more given detail Shit, should we shoot them he's like shoot them sheesh Dang, that's a tough position right there. But I, but I heard, yeah, he is like a one-man army, man. He took somebody's uh, Super Bowl ring one time. He just took it. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. I heard that story off uh, uh, Joe Rogan's podcast, like a short uh, little film. He said, yeah, uh, one, of the, one of the members that were uh, – Dan, let me plug this in real quick. Computer's about to die. Oh, shit. I put out everything. I'm supposed to be using this light. There we go. That's for your chickens. Sheesh, there we go, bro. Is that for your chickens? Yeah, that heat lamp over there. Oh, uh, yeah, right there. Yeah, that's for them. Yeah. They need them some heat. I got myself some heat too, bro. Because that it, shit that stays in here. I got that fan blowing. Yeah. I got a window open, bro. Sheesh. Man. You know. That's funny, though, bro. That Putin, man, the more I learn about him, the more he's just like, uh, like, uh, I guess the word would be like an alpha male. He just takes that shit. Man, I, I'm telling you, man, this, uh, I, I haven't even heard of that uh, Putin taking somebody's NFL ring. Yeah, one of the members were going true? to see him. Yeah, dude, one of the members were going to see, were seeing him. Next thing you know, he said, oh, let me see it. He gra uh, Dude takes it off his finger, and then he hands it to Putin. Putin puts it on his finger, and then just walks off. 
the football oh, player says. Man. Football oh, player man. was like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and then his bodyguards were like, uh-uh, uh-uh. You ain't, you ain't getting that, uh-uh. And the dude was just yeah. lost, bro. Lost his damn ring, man. Probably the only one he got. <laughs> Jeez, but I gotta, we gotta learn some more about that. That's international scandal involving Russian President Vladimir Putin and the case of the allegedly stolen Super Bowl ring. That ring belonged to New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft, who claims Putin walked off with it when they met several years ago. Well, the Russian leader is now responding to the allegation by offering an odd and somewhat lavish solution. ABC's Kirit Radia is in Moscow. Vladimir Putin is finally addressing an international scandal that's hounded him all week. Accusations he stole a Super Bowl ring from New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft. Putin's response, what ring? What chain? That was funny. I was like, what the fuck? Man, imagine, imagine um, Peyton Manning accepting <laughs> that uh, NFL Super Bowl ring. He gives that speech to the crowd. Say, I'd like to thank God. I'd like to thank all of y'all. Who takes that said as I'd like to thank you. Jeez. <laughs> it's like, thanks for winning that Super Bowl for me. And then you got poof right there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. Um, what? What's the what's the thing you're uh, what's the Ukraine okay the Ukraine and Russian war, you say you wanted to talk some about that, how it's going yeah, on yeah, mm -hmm. man what do, well see the thing is man, there is uh man the, you know I I talked a lot about uh, the things. Um, that Putin is is lacking, mm -hmm. and uh, so far, uh, Ukraine's been kicking Russia's ass, man. Mm -hmm. But there's there's a few things that that Russia's got going for them. One, fear. Um. For many reasons, they they see him as unpredictable, man. Hmm. He shot missiles at, at a school, man. Ooh. With little kids. Yeah, man. I, I believe I've seen something like that. Elementary school? I don't know what kind of school it was, but I know that they were saying that it was something where a lot of kids were. So I, I imagine it was a school of some kind. To the war in Ukraine now and a tragic scene in a major city. The Ukrainian government says Russian missiles hit a children's hospital with a maternity ward. And children are said to be in that rubble. CBS 2's Dick Brennan here now with the latest. Dick. Well, Maurice and Christine, there's no clear word on deaths or injuries, but there could be many casualties. Ukraine says Russia has been targeting civilians, even as they claim to give safe passage to refugees. But, um, yeah, and that's, um, that's Putin doing that. Well, I mean, it's not it's not him actually pulling the trigger and shooting the missiles, you know, but, but, but he's uh, ordering this shit. Yeah, dang. Damn, bro. And, uh, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, the, the willing to kill their kids, man. Um, another one is the main reason why no country's been wanting to fuck with Russia. And it's obvious that, um, uh, it's because I believe nowadays Russia has more nukes than America. Not by much, though. Hmm. But, um, you know, they're, they're saying that, you know, Putin's getting paranoid because, you know, he can't trust his own soldiers, you know. And so he's saying, man, and he, he knows he's losing, man, the, the Russian soldiers. There's been plenty more casualties with, with the Russians than there are with the Ukrainians, man. Mm -hmm. And um, 
So, I mean, he might just, you know, start World War III, man. He might just shoot them damn nukes off all over Ukraine, man. And <clears throat> that would be a, that would probably be listed as a war crime because there is a, uh, like a, like a United thing. Mm -hmm. Like a United uh, World Treaty. Yeah, something like that. And they said that uh, they ban uh, nuclear warfare. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but Russia, I mean, their nukes, they got more than every other country. Mm. But, but NATO, NATO, uh, that, that's the reason all that shit started because uh, Ukraine wanted to join NATO. And, and uh, NATO was actually formed to be a defense for, the, for if the day came to where the world needs to be able to defend itself from attacks from Russia. These are the little countries and, um, you know, Canada and the United States are also part of um, all these uh, mostly uh, European countries that um, came together because, you know, they want they want to be a team mm -hmm. and end up coming out victorious as if, if you know, the Goliath uh, Russia ever said, you know, the hell with it all and start bombing everybody. Mm. And um, Ukraine, the Ukraine, man, this is one thing that I will say about the Ukraine. The Ukraine, the the conflict with the Ukraine and Russia isn't new, man. This is, they've been, they've been having conflict for shit probably about 20 years. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, the, the the Ukrainian soldiers was right there on the border, staring down Russian uh, Russian soldiers on their border, you know, and they've been they've been waiting for some shit to pop off, and now they got it going. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I tell you what, Ukraine is a small ass country. I mean, other than Russia. The Ukraine is the biggest country in Europe, but mm. uh, you, uh, the Ukraine is probably about the size of a, uh, probably about the size of Colorado or maybe Kansas. I mean, it's, it's, it's a small country compared to the United States and especially compared to, to Russia. And for one of these, you know, little, mighty mouses to you know be staring down russia man i got i gotta give them props man mm -hmm. because man for you know nobody else was was going to be nobody else would be doing that um yeah man ukraine has been on guard against russia for a long ass time man and uh this is just another David and Goliath story. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, just like David came out on top, mm -hmm. Ukraine has been kicking Russia's ass, man. Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah, when I'm they go for that, huh? Mm -hmm. I said, I feel like uh, like when they throw that third, throw, uh, third strike, man, it's going to be over with. And that, that oh, Russia yeah. is just going to fall apart. It's going to fall down and I've been probably not even be able to revive themselves because the rest of the world is probably going to go in and investigate what they've been doing or at least ukraine will man and you know <clears throat> the ukraine's population mm -hmm. is uh the, the the country hasn't been growing man in population i mean it's it's even been declining before the war 
Yeah. Um, so man, their their population in that country was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And when you have a declining population in that country, that means you you're working with a smaller army. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you know that's that's probably one of the reasons why the Ukraine has been wanting to join with uh, NATO because um you know they're right they're ne right there they're right there on Russia's ass crack man they are right there at their front door man and they want to have some backup if some shit pops off man um, <clears throat> and uh and uh the, and they were saying that um, you know America can't can't send their military um, to uh, Ukraine. None of the countries within that NATO organization can send their soldiers to help the Ukraine. <clears throat> because if they do then uh, that would like if if America sent the soldiers to help that would uh, be like America declaring war on Russia because they're, they're sending soldiers to, to kill Russian soldiers mm -hmm. you know so nobody within the NATO organization can nobody can send uh uh, uh soldiers i mean they can't send their military but there's people from those countries that are volunteering to go uh by and uh <clears throat> yeah i've heard some of that like some people from uh some different states they're volunteering to go fight on ukraine side so they're getting drafted mm -hmm. pretty much from them i'm like what the heck i didn't even know you could do that but man they're doing it it's crazy, man. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, there's there's a lot that I don't know about um, the, the the drafting part. Uh, I didn't know that the Ukraine could draft uh, soldiers from different countries. Yeah. Um, but uh, what I thought it was was just people, you know, went to go there and help the Ukraine because what I man yeah. tell you something um I was actually really wanting to part of me does and part of me don't yeah. um but part of me wants to go over there and and volunteer man uh but I feel like at this moment I wouldn't be much of a help <clears throat> because, uh, you know, with me being dependent on my medication, mm -hmm. um, you know, I got to wait until I'm off of that medication if I want to do anything like that, man. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, man, I mean, when, when if you're a soldier, you're, I mean, if you're a soldier, then you're a soldier regardless of uh regardless of where it is where uh where the soldier is you know and um the that that's one of the problems that's one of the things that got my mind state the way it is uh today man i've been on medication for my nerves since i was 18 man a lot of that shit has to do about the war is going on in the projects, man. <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah. Uh, man, I mean, I tell you what, man. War is war, man. Don't matter how it don't it don't matter. Like, man, you you think that you know just overseas fighting is war? No. You don't understand reality. And I know a lot of people, you know, can't fucking function without medication <clears throat> because of some traumatizing shit. And uh man, but yeah, I yeah, man. If I'm on that medication, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be any kind of benefit, man. Because eventually, I'd be running out of that medication, and and I'll be a hermit trying to, you know, stay inside somewhere and have that bitch blown up. Mm -hmm. Nah, and I've heard uh, shell shock, man. Shell shock during during the war, bro. Sheesh, mm -hmm. the worst, man. Just seeing like a zombie going on the battlefield, and then just can't do nothing. That damn, yeah, yeah, I feel you about that. No, I mean, I mean, you know, the Ukraine <clears throat> actually said, uh, let all the prisoners out who were convicted of violent crimes come out and help fight. Hmm. Man, they are really getting everybody on their ass, man. Man, like, imagine that being something here, man. Like, you're going to be having everybody, people uh, convicted of violent crimes. That's going to be half the people in uh, 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 mental asylums. That's going to be uh, just about everywhere in the prison. Man. But I mean, well, when you say let the prisoners out, man, it, you are making desperate moves, man, because that's that's an unpredictable. Uh, the, the the outcome to that is you you can't predict what's happening, but what what happened, you know? Yeah, and man, that's that's like you're you're taking a most craziest people that know how to do horrible things and join them on your side like put them on your side and expect some of them not to escape and expect all of them to um, fight for you and that's a i, I feel yeah, like some I mean, of them some of them would try to escape i bet i don't doubt he's yeah. like man screw this country yeah you know that that is a big possibility but uh Another thing that they'd have to be looking out for is uh, uh, friendly fire, mm -hmm. because um, a lot of people in there, a lot of people in um, uh, Ukrainian prison are um, Russian supporters, man. And, um, man, you don't want to let the wrong one out, man, because they'll be helping Russia, man. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so that's a that, that's a slippery slope right there man oh wait you said uh ukraine let the prisoners out or russia let their prisoners out sorry what'd you uh, say you said, you said uh russia let the russian the russian let the let their prisoners out or is it the ukraine, no, ukraine. the ukraine, the ukraine did? yeah sheesh dang i, I mean, know they're but i mean Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I see I see why, man, because the Russian population is over 100 million. Uh, the Ukrainian population is declining every day, but um, right now it's probably about 40 million. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're calling on everybody. You're calling on civilian, man, soldiers are given uh civilians guns and saying you know you see one kill one you know mm -hmm. uh, mm. man it <laughs> we are in a queue where people are waiting to get their weapons to fight the russian invaders there is no reason to believe that they're going to stop anytime soon and their objective clear, clearly, at least to me, seems to be 
the occupation of my entire country and uh, the destruction of everything that I love. I'm just a regular civilian. I have basically nothing to do with war or any other thing like it. And I, I wouldn't really want to participate in, in anything like this, but I don't really have any choice because this is my home. Мотивація проста – це краще, ніж сидіти вдома і чекати, поки до тебе щось прилетить, і хто як не ми. Це crazy, man. It is crazy, man. And, uh, but, man, one of the things, you know, I don't, I don't see myself like some kind of badass or anything like that. I mean, I'm just saying, like, part of me wants to go volunteer, man, because... I mean, what else am I doing with my life, you know? Mm -hmm. I got, that's, that's the kind of mentality that I have. Like, wait, what else am I doing working at Walmart? I got a soldier mentality. What am I going to do with that mentality? Just going to go up to the customer. Ma'am, I will die to find you the best TV. Nah, I mean, yeah, super ent enthusiastic you have to be. <laughs> Like shit for the company you work for, shit. Honestly, Aye. you got you you got a fighting spirit, just wanting to erupt out and then fucking go do make some moves, you know. Man, I mean that that's the kind of shit that I that that that's that's the kind of shit that grew on me in the projects, man. Having that willingness to fight for the neighborhood, man. You know, and that kind of shit really like I, I try to push that shit out, man. But I just gotta kind of channel it, man. That's why I, I take this martial arts shit, man. I need something to, you know, fill that void. Um, yeah, man. Uh, but uh, I feel you on that, though. I gotta get some some training in, cause um, dang, I man, you got a fire inside of you, right? And then sometimes you just want to let it all go, but like let it all go in a way where you you feel like like it's a movie type, and you're a character, you're mm -hmm. there making that action scene, and then it just it just feels fucking crazy, amazing, like you're man, man inside. Uh, mm -hmm. Man, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta make the right moves, man, because you can't just let that kind of energy out anywhere, man. Like, um, uh, like, um, like growing up in the projects, man. I mean, I grew up, you know, trying to fight off, you know, drunks down the street, you know, mm. but I mean, you know, trying to you know fight in a in a in, in a uh in a, a simple dispute mm -hmm. you know here like 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 me i can't stand my neighbor man because he 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 he's got a big mouth on him man but i can't just fire off on i can't just fire off on him man because I, I i'm pretty sure he'd be calling the police man that's mm -hmm. why i'm saying i got to I got to channel that kind of energy in in a in a positive way, man. Mm -hmm. uh, in in a way that won't get me locked up. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's what I'm saying. Like uh, with Will Smith, that's who, that's one of the reasons why I gotta have that kind of contract. You know, because I mean, you know that that situation that I told you a while back, why I chipped my tooth. <laughs> And uh, well, the the dude, the dude mm -hmm. was the the dude was all over some kind of he was game banger minded man. Mm -hmm. He he had like he was the toughest motherfucker alive, bro. Um, you know, and then you know, and, you know, I believe he was drunk because I did smell some 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 alcohol on him. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, if 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 I'm in a position where I got to defend myself, mm -hmm. then you know, all all roles go out the window, man. If I'm fighting to defend myself, I'm fighting for survival, mm -hmm. life or death. You know, yeah, I mean, and see, this is the thing, man. 
I'm the toughest acting motherfuckers that take one ass whooping and call the police, man. I'm telling you, man, that it's, that's one of the reasons why one of my older uh, mottos was, you know, the bigger the gun, the bigger the bitch. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, a lot of people, especially here in America, they mm -hmm. carry a gun because they don't want their ass whooped. Mm -hmm. they're, they're scared to get their ass whooped. But I'm not going to say that about, you know, a place like Ukraine. They need their guns because it's guns against nukes, man. You better have some guns. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, man, the toughest motherfuckers would be the ones getting their ass kicked and calling the police, man. That's why I'm saying you got to have something to have your ass. You got you got to protect. You got to protect yourself, you know, physically mm -hmm. and with and legally. Mm -hmm. You got to protect yourself in all ways, man. Um. That's crazy though, because you uh that that puts a, a little different perspective on why Will Smith actually slapped Chris Rock. Uh, the joke made him well, it's not even a joke. It was seeing his wife mad at him, and then he's like, "Oh, I don't have to. I don't want to deal with this at home, so I'm gonna deal with this right now." And he to go please his wife, which he I'm guessing he always does, but he doesn't do it all the way to the point where she's satisfied. He wanted to go deal with it now instead of having to deal with it later. Because I'm pretty sure when he got home, well, if if he didn't slap Chris Rock, he would have, they would have went home and then she would have, man, bitched at him and said, why didn't you do nothing for me? What type of man are you? Started making all these types of things in his head that he's already been listening to from his previous wives, his previous girls. And he's man, he probably like that that positive way of channeling it, he doesn't have mm -hmm. that. And man, the way he did it. I mean, was, uh -uh. I mean he he does have a positive way of channeling that. Mm -hmm. Because again, this man is a multimillionaire. He could sign up for boxing classes and you know, beat the shit out of something. Right. He's got he's got a lot more options than somebody like me or you do, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, he, he's got a million options, man. Just because like, you got it was me personally. Hmm? Right. Just just because you got options doesn't mean you always take them. Exactly. He, he, he took he took uh, he, he took a bitch. He took a bit a uh, bitch option mm -hmm. because. Uh, Man, there, there, there is. Uh, I seen this video where uh, Will Smith was. Uh, it's an older video. It's not a newer one. Mm -hmm. uh, Will Smith was at a uh, ball game, something, and uh, and there was some kind of gay reporter who. Uh, walked up and kissed him. The only intelligent creatures in the universe, especially since we're not. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Hey, you oh, 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 man, was your problem, buddy? And uh, he slept the shit out of him, but mm -hmm. I mean, I can't hate him for that. Yeah. Um, but but what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. um, he he's slapping gays, he's slapping comedians, you know. Chris Rock doesn't seem like the man that's gonna, you know, fire off on somebody, man. Like he, he basically knows the kind of people who he can get away with with slapping. He ain't gonna do that to to a real man. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's that 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 gay kissing thing, man. What? <laughs> Did you see that video? No, I didn't see it, but that sounds that sounds like him. Like he would less he would someone would kiss him, but then he would approach it in a in a in a way where it, he wants to be seen as a man, but it, it doesn't come off like that. Yeah. It actually comes off as the opposite. Yeah. Damn. 
Man, I mean, I mean, I, I can understand slapping a gay dude, man, because I mean, if you if you haul off and break a gay dude's nose, you're gonna have the nose all over your ass. Mm-hmm. Man, because I mean, gays are treated like females, man. You better not put your hands on a gay man. Nice. Man, I mean, so, I mean, yeah, I, I can I can understand why, you know, Will Smith didn't go a little harder on a gay dude. Mm-hmm. But uh, but Chris Rock, I mean, I I don't respect him for for even getting up to put hands on him. But I probably would have respected him a little bit more if he put some oomph in that hit, man. Not hit and not slap somebody like somebody's mama, man. That that ain't what a man does, man. Mm, shit. You're right about that. I don't me, man. That was that was that was a straight man. He, Chris Rock who held his position, man. He's like, man, I, I know what I'm doing. Do you know what you're doing for the right reasons? Because I swear yeah. I saw you laugh. I swear I saw you laugh, man. And then, yeah, man. And uh, I don't know, but because I seen I seen uh Will Smith at his like lowest, and I've seen him one time on a TV show. His eyes, man, just look dead from I'm guessing crying a lot about his wife and divorcing him and his dude. And it, dude, like you said, he is a simp. That's the best way to put it, bro. You know, and and I hope Will sees this video, man. I hope your 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 uh, subscribers share this video because I want Simp Smith to see this video. Simp Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm thinking about oh, man. One man. day, one day I'm gonna get to talk to him and be like, "Damn, bro, really, man, you." You gotta change your life around, bro. This ain't doing you any. You don't look good. You ain't doing good. I mean, like if he is who he is later on in the future, when I see him, I, I'm gonna evaluate his ass. He'd be like, "Dang, bro, you still in the same position as you were long ago." Dang. And then he's gonna he's gonna yeah. say something back with the authority or some shit like that. But it's like, I mean, it is what it is. Who who Will Smith? Yeah, bro. Man, but see, see, this is the thing. Mm-hmm. Certain actions that people take make their entire life based off what they did then. Mm-hmm. Like, let's say, mm-hmm. um, let's 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 say Hitler lived twenty more years and ended up changing his life around. He might do mm-hmm. some good shit, but they're always going to remember him for killing 17 million people. Mm-hmm. And that the certain actions of your past is always going to give you an image sometimes. Mm-hmm. Now, see, people like uh, Nas X. Have you heard of Nas X? Nas, I have, but not Nas X. I've heard of him. Well, he is. Uh, yeah, I better watch what I say about him. Uh, let me try to find a... Trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, what would be YouTube friendly? Jesus. YouTube friendly, huh? <laughs> he 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 is a homosexual rapper, and um, a while back he made a YouTube video mm-hmm. um, giving the devil a lap dance. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and um, and. Uh, he, he made shoes and um, advertised that uh, like the shoes inside of it, inside of it, if I remember, the shoes had a pentagram inside of the shoe and uh, inside of that pentagram had a drop of human blood. 
And uh, he was advertising that, that these new shoes were made with human blood and, and shit like that. And rapper Lil Nas X introduced a unique sneaker already drawing social media controversy for satanic images. The music artist is launching a collaboration Satan sneaker under the custom brand Mischief. He says each shoe contains a small amount of red ink and one drop of human blood in the sole. It costs $1,018 a pair. And um, he was advertising all kinds of devil shit, man, man, man. He he's still young, man. He mm -hmm. I don't believe he's any older than about 25 years old. Mm -hmm. But no matter what this man, what this, what this thing does, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I just no said, boy, this, <laughs> you said thing. No matter what, <laughs> no matter what this thing does in uh -huh. his future no matter what kind of good he does in his life there's gonna be real men that'd be like when you dancing on satan's lap you know that you know um um he he might he might as he gets older he might say some shit like you know that was just a face that i was going through you know, he might change his life around and actually start doing positive shit for the community. Mm -hmm. And um, there, there would be people like me who would say, like, didn't you make shoes with human blood? Mm -hmm. Aren't you that guy that was uh, sucking on Satan's mm -hmm. You know, you, I'm going to bleep that. I'm, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to, you know. Nobody, like, there's going to be people who will never forget that past, and that past will, will stick with them. Mm -hmm. Every time you look in somebody's face, man, all you can see is what they did. Mm -hmm. And certain people, certain people just got that, that image. Some, some people's image never leaves, man. And um, that's just like Will Smith, man. You know, he he got away with slapping that gay dude because not a lot of people like that shit didn't hit the media so hard. But at the Oscars, the whole world was watching it, man. He got up there and bitch slapped Chris Rock. Everybody seen that shit. And uh, you know, if 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 I was wrong, then you know I, I would admit it. But I wouldn't go so far out of my way to to uh, sit there and cry about it. You know, somebody like Will Smith, he's got enough problems already, man. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he, he just made a lot more problems for himself. Um, he, he dodged a bullet legally because mm -hmm. Chris Rock, I don't think he's going to press charges. Um, but you know, he he could have blackballed himself from Hollywood movement. Mm -hmm. Like there, there's there's a lot of famous people who who was disgusted by what he did. Mm -hmm. And a lot of fame like, man, he's going he's gonna struggle to find work in movies. Well, let me say he's gonna struggle to find work in A movies. B movies that take anybody. Mm. Hey, give me one minute. Give me one minute. I'll be back. Gotcha. Crazy. A lot of insight here. Hmm, our perspective on that though. It's thinking in my head. We each have our own perspective of how we see these people. And we also have a quality meter. A quality meter that helps us see the quality of bad 
shenanigans they did and the quality of good things they did. That'll be the ultimate perspective of us. I was just saying that we all have our own perspective of each of these people. And we measure that in like the quality, quality of how much bad things they've done or that we've seen them do and the quality of good things that we've seen them do. And that's how we're just going to view them based on which side is more than the other. Because that Nas, yeah. man, I haven't seen him do anything. I, me, through my perspective, through him, I haven't seen him do none of that. Because I, 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 I realized who you were talking about. And I was like, yeah, that dude is gay. That dude, I don't know if he's trans or none of that, but he did do a lap dance on the devil. That, mm -hmm. that was wild. And I just... No, I skipped it. As soon as I heard that, I was like, no, I'm not watching that. Because I just heard more and more. I was like, no, I'm not watching that, bro. <laughs> you can, I could say I could save my brain from all them nasty images, man. I'm mm -hmm. It is disgusting, man. Yeah. Uh, nope. Man. Uh, I'm, man, I'm very late on uh, my TFC, too, man. Oh, um, damn. It's yeah, been time, yeah. bro. Anyway, uh, with the yeah. TFC, what, what does that stand for? Uh, Top of Puche. Welcome, everyone, to TCF Crunch Night. TCF is short for Top of the Food Chain. This is where one man is forced to devour multiple insects at one sitting to be declared winner. Tonight, our competitors are CLB Merciless and some crickets, who will be the top of the food chain. Dang. Yeah. Do you have one video that you're late on or two? Uh, well, I go based off of subscriber counts, and I was supposed to. Uh, do my TFC video uh, around the 400 subscriber mark mm. but man I, the way that I want to do this one is a little different than how I did the first one mm. um, and for this one I'm going to be in the kitchen so uh, when I walk around I need somebody holding the camera for me. So it's going to take me a minute to find that. Like, that's what I would like to do. That's what I would like to find. Um, but if I, if, if I can't find it, then. Um, why, don't you get your, uh, what, why don't you get your aunt to do it? Or help you out? No, no. That would be funny. She, yeah, I, I feel like she'll be in a funny background commentator. Telling you to eat that she, shit. Eat that shit. <laughs> No, she, no, she'll she'll be saying some terrible shit, man. <laughs> Dude, that would just make it more enjoyable to watch. I was like, yo, uh, man, no, I, I, I'm saying she'd be saying some some terrible shit. I'd probably get kicked off YouTube if if <laughs> if if I posted her shit, man. I hope I don't get a uh, copyright strike or oh, uh, a strike on this video because we said a lot of cuss words. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I'm gonna have to edit that. Um, I'm gonna see what happens. I'm just gonna post this. I'm just gonna post it, mm -hmm. and I, hopefully, I hopefully a, a little bit of edits. See how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, TFC man. Mm -hmm. For any of your viewers who who don't know what that is. Um, <clears throat> I do something, uh, it's, it's a bug eating challenge. Now these aren't just some, um, you know, bugs I find walking up the, in the grass, you know, mm -hmm. uh, these are bugs that are properly prepared, prepared for human consumption. I ordered them, um, okay. from a place that prepares them <clears throat> and I do this uh thing where um I'm watching some kind of funny video and if I laugh then I have to eat a certain amount of bugs and shit um 
but th that um, that was the concept for the first TFC. Um, but for the second, um, I'd like it to be a little different and, you know, go back and forth on concepts like uh, uh, the same concept as uh, TFC 1, um, then have something a little different for TFC 2, and then on TFC C3, go back to the concept of TFC1 and kind of get something to rotate with, you know. Um, you know, just so shit don't get boring, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. yeah, the, the first TFC was, uh, were, uh, what were they? There were uh, crickets. And um, the second one is going to be uh, roaches. I mean, grasshoppers, not roaches. That's uh, the project ad edition, you know. <laughs> uh, damn, Brian. I remember them roaches, man. Turn on the light 12, 12 a.m. and uh, at the nighttime, babe. everywhere, bro. They started. Yeah. Scattering the oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn, bro. That's funny, but, uh, though, man. I like them videos. <laughs> man, I tell you what. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, uh, man, you know what I've seen today? Hmm. Well, no, it wasn't today. I don't know why I thought it was today. It was actually last week. Um, while I was walking my dog, man, I seen this, uh, I seen this, uh, a uh, white guy walking down the street, barely got his damn pants up, man. Like they're, like they're this close to being on his damn ankles, man. And yeah. I just want to, I just want to be that guy that says, pull your fucking britches up, wigger, man. <laughs> but I mean. I mean, I'm I'm really not trying to start no shit, man. But I mean, you know, part of it, I really want to, man. But uh, I mean, you gotta give respect to give respect, man. I can't be doing that. So you would tell him in a respectful way, "Hey, man, there's children out here, bro." <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't even know what started that sagging shit, man. Oh, but, it's man, a, I mean, it was fast. It was uh, gay people in uh, prisons uh, sh uh, to well, show I mean, other prisoners yeah, they were yeah. gay. Yeah, so, I wow. mean, I knew that part. I knew that part. I'm talking about what started that shit out in the free world, man. Oh, because, man. Because, like, a people, a, a lot of people, like, man, they, they've been, people out here in the free world have been sagging for fucking decades, man. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Man, I, I just I don't know I don't understand it, man. Because even when I was in the prize, man, I wasn't sagging, man. I, I you, there was never a day where someone would see me sagging, mm -hmm. man. Because I believe that shit, like I believe that shit is embarrassing, man. Mm -hmm. Man. Uh, I mean, I got I got love for everybody, man. But there was a time <clears throat> there was a time in my past when um, you know I would only mess with uh, Mexicans and whites, and you know barely any whites. Mm. But I mean, and this was in the past, man, because certain conflicts got shit started, but. You know, see, this is the thing about racism, man. <sighs> it takes a lot of energy to hate. I mean, hatred 
is something that you, that, that that you're carrying in your heart, and man, and that that feeling of hatred. That's you're you're never you're never really happy, man, because uh, man, you you're constantly thinking, man, I hate that bastard. You know, in your mind, when you got a when you got a mind full of hatred. Man, there is nothing happy in your mind, man. In your mind, that hatred is just thinking about, oh, the th things I would do to this guy, the things I would do to him. <clears throat> the way that I looked at it is, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, live my life being miserable hating on somebody over something that they have no control over. Like me, I can't, I can't, I, I can't control me being born white. You know, I got a lot of shit in the projects for it, you know, growing up one of the few white boys. So I was constantly reminded what my people did. <laughs> what the heck? But, uh, yeah, I mean, hey, man, I was, I was constantly reminded, look what your white people did. <laughs> oh, man, you, you just wait till damn middle school and you hear all that history about slavery and all that shit, all that fucking shit, you know, just look what your white people did. Oh, man, like, I mean, it's, it's man it, it's that kind of shit that you don't really have no control over you feel me mm -hmm. i can't control that i'm white you know you can't control that you're mexican you know nobody can control that they're black you know mm -hmm. and so you know i mean i got all kinds of shit man like in high school man if like <laughs> Oh man, somebody say some shit like, uh, you know, uh, you going to enslave another race. I How's said, that? boy, boy, I wish I had that kind of time on my hands. <laughs> oh man, bro. <laughs> but uh, man, hey, man, let me tell you. But um, uh, there, there is nothing that embarrasses me more than uh, drunk, trailer trash, white people, and wigger white people. Because this shit is so fucking embarrassing, man. What do you mean by wigger? Wigger, like a white guy who acts black. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the guy, white guys who sag their pants, talk try to try to talk like they're they're part of the nwa like yo 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 mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you know you get white people wearing durags and all kinds of shit i know they're all thinking i'm so white and nerdy I'm just too white and nerdy yeah that's something man i seen it man first time i seen that was on a, like a photo i think but it was instagram it was man, i was like what the heck man, it's a, yeah, it's a thing too. now man Man, I, I'm telling you, man, this shit is fucking embarrassing, man, because it, it it makes makes people like me look retarded, man, because they they're looking at him now. Remember, to some people, these are my people. You know, these wiggers are, you know, according to them, they're my people. But I mean, you know, I don't claim any of them people. You know, I, you know, I. Yeah. I disown all of them people because they make people like me look fucking retarded, man. I'm a white man. I'm proud of it. Just like you a Mexican man, and you should be proud of it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> man, but uh, man, I tell you what, man. Hey, hmm. uh, yeah, man, this uh, this uh, Oh man, that that reminds me. I got uh, I got uh, I got some shit for for my last video. I got some people messaging me talking about uh, 
you shouldn't have said the N word in that video. Said the N word. Uh, they must have thought that I said that when I was saying wigger. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I mean <laughs> it yeah. is what it is. People need to pay attention. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing with this. Like, I feel like uh, people are gonna people eventually. That you, whenever you go out in business, man, they're going to watch your social media presence, see who you are, how you are. And then they'll be like, nah, I don't want to do service with you or this or that. And that's one thing. It's like, all right, that's fine because it is what it is. I make my own brand videos. And then what I do for you is something else. And, uh, but, and then that goes back to where people be like, they see this side and they see this side of you. Which side are they going to uh, see more of? That's right. I gotta plug my laptop here. Yeah, it's about to die. And don't pull all the cords like I did. Gosh. <laughs> nah. We'll go for another 20 hours. Shit, though. The hours. 20 hours, man. That's how long I stay grinding, man. Until like the next, the after the third day. If I ever sit, if I sit down on the couch or a seat, something like that, I start passing out, man. But I grind hard, man. I gotta grind, man. Yeah. It works. I mean, but but yeah, I mean, my 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 stance today mm -hmm. on that is uh you know anybody who's got respect for me i got respect for them well it depends on who they are um <clears throat> but uh i mean I, i'm not gonna hate on anybody over their race man um because i mean if i hate somebody like me personally, if I hate somebody, man, I can't tell you the kind of shit that I want to do. But I mean, you know, if, if I hate somebody, I gotta have a reason to hate somebody, man. Mm -hmm. Like, um, like, man, being black ain't enough for me to hate you. You know, when I was homeless, when I was homeless, one of the few people who who gave a damn was a black man. He offered me some of uh, I know that's gonna sound stereotypical, but he gave me some of his chicken. Yeah, man, that chicken was good, man, man. And let me tell you what else, man. When I was homeless, uh, man, I got I got help from everybody except my own man well when i say my own i'm talking about white people man i got help from everybody except for my own man um and and one of the things that that almost makes me want to cry man is mm -hmm. you know um when i was homeless i had too much pride to be on the corner asking people for money man I was living at the airport for for most of that time, and I went down uh, down the escalator to the uh, uh, airport security. Both of them were, were uh, white men, and um, I said, "Listen, um, I'm over a thousand miles away from home, and I don't want to be begging people for money." I said, "Can I sell some of my shit out of my luggage bags?" to make some money to get back home. And uh, they said, no, if we catch you, we got to lock you up. So mm -hmm. I didn't do nothing like that. But, uh, you know, when uh, when I was on my way back, well, let me tell you something else, man. Mm -hmm. when, uh, when I was at that airport, I was I was sleeping on a bench. Now, it was a metal bench, but it went outside. It was inside. And um, <clears throat> I had been there about four days already. And, um, you know, in the back of my mind, I was going to, I was saying to myself, eventually they're going to tell me to leave. So, um, you know, I was just 
and stay in there as long as I could. Um, um, but uh, one, one day I was sleeping on the bench and um, somebody was tapping on my shoulder. I, I, I swear I thought it was security telling me I gotta go. You know, he can't be living at the airport. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, I open my eyes and it's this Mexican dude gives me $40. And man, at this point, man, it's almost about, it's like four or five days. And during that time, I haven't had one shower, man. At that time, I was, I was homeless. I didn't have a shower, you know? So I, I'm sure I smelled homeless, but man, it, it brings tears to my eyes, man, because I didn't ask for, for shit, man that these people had it in their hearts to want to help me. And um, man, it, it really, it, it's amazing, man. And um, yeah, man, <clears throat> when, when I was coming back home, uh, I actually had some homies out in Houston that helped me scratch up money to get back home. And uh, I had to take the um, Greyhound state, the Greyhound bus from uh, uh, where I was. It was, uh, I believe it's south of Los Angeles. It was uh, Santa Ana, mm -hmm. from Santa Ana to uh, Los Angeles. And that Los Angeles, man, they are the most unprofessional people, man. Mm. Man. I was, uh, I had my luggage, um, but I only had enough for the, the bus ticket. You had to have extra money to carry your luggage on. You had to buy the tags for your luggage. And uh, I didn't have the money for the, for the tags. So I left all of my shit there. <clears throat> I'm talking about everything, bro. Everything was in my luggage bags, man all every bit of my clothes except for the shit that i was wearing you know. um family pictures man uh, my damn wallet was in there man all man like when i went out there to cali mm -hmm. i was i was 19 so that was about nine years ago <clears throat> I was, uh, yeah, I was uh, 19 and I went out there because there was a girl that said, you know, she loved me and I was going out there to marry her. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, shit didn't work. But, uh, uh, yeah, man, I only had that one way ticket because I wasn't planning on coming back. I didn't buy a round way ticket. Um, and um, I, I couldn't afford, I couldn't afford shit, man. And uh, uh, you know what she said? Mm -hmm. She said, uh, she said, when I got to the airport, she said, I'm going to be honest with you, but I don't want you to get mad because uh, in the beginning, she was saying uh, um, that she was at the airport already waiting on me. And, um, you know, I went downstairs. I went everywhere looking for her in that, in that airport. And after a while, after a while looking for her, she says, uh, I'm in the next city over in Irvine. I want you to get a, a, a taxi and meet me in a motel in Irvine. Mm. And in my mind, I'm like, well, there, there's a lot of shit that I'm thinking, man. One, I can't trust you. I flew across the fucking country to come be with you. And you drive down the street to come get me. And uh, and after the, the plane ticket for a one-way ticket, it was... Uh, $1 or some shit like that. And I only had $600. So 
So after that plane ticket, I had $40, uh, no, $49 left to, to survive on. And that was, you know, $49, um, you know, that's about two or three days worth of food, especially in California, man. Mm-hmm. Man, and I don't know what the hell she was thinking, man. I don't know what the hell she was thinking. Like I told her, I only had forty nine dollars. What kind of, what kind of hotel in California am I going to get with forty nine dollars? You know. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I mean, um, today I actually still talk to her. You know, I don't. I forgave her and everything, but. I told her, um, I told her that day, I said, I forgive you for all this shit, but we're done. And um, that, that that trip coming back home, I actually got deported. I'm probably, I, I'm not lying, man. I actually got deported. Uh, deported, deported where? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, man. Uh, so I left all of my shit at LA at the Greyhound station in LA, man. And um, man, there, there's these, uh, there's these uh, fat girls, man. They're all saying like, uh, and they're ratchet as fuck, man. Mm-hmm. And, and uh i'm saying um what do you want me to do with uh my luggage she said take it with you i said i can't i can't afford it she said what are you talking about she said she said man you must be strung out on something i told her my situation i said listen i'm a thousand miles well i'm more than a thousand miles away from home and all I have is enough money for this bus ticket. I don't have enough money for this tag. Mm-hmm. Now, if I don't make this bus home, I'm going to be homeless here forever. Man, and that, for some reason, that was something that they couldn't understand. Hmm. But, um, I mean, All of that shit was replaceable, man. I wasn't about to stay homeless my whole life for that shit. <clears throat> but I should have brought my ID and my uh, social and all that shit, man. Because, all right, so from LA, now this is me without a damn thing, except the shit that I'm wearing. So from LA, we went to, I believe it was Mesa, Arizona, to, what was it? I believe it was Albuquerque and then El Paso. El Paso, El Paso, they had that uh, immigration check. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and um, the disappointing thing about that mm-hmm. were these immigration officers were Mexicans. There were hey. Mexicans deporting Mexicans. That's, hey. some, that's some disgusting right shit. It is, man. It is. Fudge. But... Uh, mm-hmm. The um, they get on the bus. They're asking everybody if they're a United States citizen. They don't care if you're white, black, Asian, Chinese, Mexican, or what. They don't care. They're asking everybody. And uh, the Mexican immigration officer he gets up to me and he asks me, and uh, I don't know about you, but looking at me i don't think i look anything mexican i don't sound anything mexican Mm -hmm. i thought it'd be pretty obvious for him to tell that i was just getting smart with them 
Um, he got me and asked me if I had if uh, if I was a United States citizen. I said no. That's exactly how I looked at him. He said, "Well, you got something to show me." And right there, I was thinking, man, I just <laughs> myself in that because <laughs> all of my shit was in the luggage bags in Cali. Dang, man. You didn't have any extra pockets or none of that? I didn't have a damn thing to show who I was, man. Fish, man. So from, from El Paso, they put me on a, a, a bus with a, a bunch of uh, illegal Mexicans. And they're all looking at me like, who the hell are you? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, they they knew I didn't belong there, <laughs> but uh, you know, I made a friend with one of the guys on the immigration bus, man, because I mean, he didn't know a lot of English, but he he knew a little bit. Mm -hmm. He asked me where I was from. I said I'm from the United States, and I got myself mm -hmm. in some shit. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, where in the United States? I said, I'm from Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And apparently, the only thing he knew about Tennessee was country music. So he called me a cowboy. Cowboy, huh? <laughs> yeah. What the heck? Shit. Yeah, and that's why, that's why I got this cowboy on me to remember that name, man. Yeah. So you're a very uh, symbolic person. You like to uh, put meaning towards things and then just as an imagery. But you do you like a uh, painting? I gotta ask this question. You said, do I like painting? Yeah, paintings. Like looking oh, at do them. I like paintings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, um. You know, I used to go by uh, alter ego because, you know, to some people, I was this kind of person. To others, I was this kind of person. Mm -hmm. And inside, I was a lot of people, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, there's uh, some Jamaican guy, some kind of Jamaican singer that took my name. So I started going by uh, Vaquero, which means cowboy in Spanish. Vaquero. Ah, okay. and um, but um, yeah, man. When I got, I mean, they from El Paso, they mm -hmm. took it right across the border to the uh, what's that city? Waters, and um, Man, I tell you what, man. Uh, I know a lot of people saying that Juarez was uh, one of the most dangerous cities in the world, but I mean, at that time, man, I didn't. Man, I mean, I didn't. I didn't see any kind of bad shit. I mean, I seen a lot of beautiful spray paintings on on buildings, man. But that that was beauty to me. <laughs> I mean that might be some that might be some gang banker shit, but that's beautiful to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man. But um yeah, I, I told um the immigration customs when I got there, I said um mm -hmm. I told them my situation. I said, listen, I'm sorry, I got I got an attitude with your officer and shit like that. I told him just I told him I'm just frustrated. I've been in a messed up situation. And uh, I told him uh, I told him I was just want to go back home. And he said, um, he asked me who I was. I gave him my information. Well, I told him my information. He looked, he he searched it up on his computer and he says, all oh, this shit checks out. He said, You're free to go. I said, free to go where? I don't know nobody in Juarez. You know, I don't, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't leaving this city. I ain't, I ain't leaving this building. The fuck I look like. <laughs> man, I'm too white to be here, man. I ain't leaving this damn building. 
All right. You don't got a Dora with you to pop out a map. I <laughs> can't lead you out of it. Oh, man. <laughs> man, I tell you what, man. Yeah, I didn't leave that building, man. But, um, yeah, they they actually fucked with me, man. They they got uh, they actually helped me get and buy a ticket back, uh, a Greyhound ticket from uh, what is to Bay Home, mm -hmm. and that yeah, that was actually that was interesting to me, man, because uh, I didn't know there was any Greyhound stations in Mexico. Yeah. Huh. That's something new. Yeah, oh, that's that, something new to learn. Hmm. Yeah, I thought that was just uh, in the United States, but um, uh, yeah, I mean that's a story I tell, man. I'm probably the only white guy here who's been deported, man. <laughs> yeah, I got a, I know. Hmm. Man, I, I'm, I got a shitload of Mexican friends, and I'm pretty sure I'm one of the few that got deported. Yeah, I bet so, man. Yeah, I bet so, bro. I only got man. a couple, couple of my family, and that's it, not me. I hey, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, oh, leave us, man. leave us off with a with a positive message today, since uh, we're wrapping, we're getting close to two hours. And then, what's your positive message for the viewers out there? Um. Probably the same message that I was given earlier. Mm -hmm. um, find positive ways to put your energy in. Um, if you want to be a salesman and you're from the projects, you don't have to be selling drugs. You can, uh, you know, go to best buy and be a sales representative or you know if you if, if uh you know if you got a soldier mentality you know you don't you don't have to be out there shooting people on the streets you know join the military or join some kind of combat sport mm -hmm. you know find positive ways to channel um things that would otherwise be negative aspects mm -hmm. um but um yeah uh i'll be putting this video on my youtube and uh we're gonna be leaving a link to both go check them out and I'll also do the same here, man. Go check out his channel. Put it down. Nah, I have no clue what I think. Cut off. But anyways, thank you for staying tuned. If you've been here this long, I appreciate you very much. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And uh, man, I hope you have a blessed, amazing Sunday. Because today's Sunday today. Whatever it's not Sunday for you, man. Go have a good day anyways. Regardless. Adios.